28th February 1928, a new era dawns upon the settlement of Ilyasa, as one of his greatest leaders, Mama Tamba Jame, was sworn in as district chief. Mama Tamba Jame's 40-year reign as chief of the district revolutionized the advancement in education and technology, and most importantly, agriculture, which it galvanized in new heights. Questing to promote cultivation of food crops for food self-sufficiency, in 1941, Chief Jame cleared the swamps of Kanikunda to commence the most historic rice project in Gambian history. Chief Tamba Jame's projects were so successful that it registered a 50% increase in the region's harvest in 1946, prompting the Duke of Edinburgh, Prince Philip, to pay a visit in 1947 to see for himself what was then described as the most historic rice production in British West Africa in those times. Tamba Jame, a grandson to the prominent chief, outlined how this historic legacy is currently under threat, with at least 70% of the Baobalong rice fields disappearing due to sea level rise, causing massive salt intrusion into the famous wetlands. I feel so sorry for myself, because imagine, during, during my childhood time, all these areas are rice fields. You see, because you have different sections, you know, they even name them. It's called Sakono, Nganimoto, eh? You see, so many. It's all these areas are rice fields in, in, during my childhood. You know, because you see, you see the stems of trees all over there. And now how many meters? How many meters away from here? You see, and salt intrusion has, 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 has absorbed all this end. Definitely, we are, in, we are definitely in, in, in a very serious problem. Frontliners of the Great Green Wall and members of the community embarked on a massive tree planting exercise to resuscitate the marshland and complement the efforts of a project that seeks to block an end salt water intrusion into the women's rice fields. The barrier built years ago to stop the salt intrusion cannot hold the water back. So adaptation comes in. Instead of putting up, setting up barriers in order to hold water, hoping that uh, some fresh water would stay, uh, what we are up for is to looking at uses of this land that could be without much engineering would be more useful to populations. So the use of trees, especially those tolerant to salt, uh, is really uh, the front line. Uh, it, I would say is the tool that we are really advocating for. Currently, the planters here are using uh, eucalyptus, primarily in slightly higher ground next, next to the embankment. This, uh, we know, uh, is, is, is suitable for eucalyptus. To find a resolution to the loss of the Ilyasa rice fields, the late son's chief, Tamba Jame, invited the Great Green Wall frontliners to discuss with the community on ways to adapt to the harsh realities of climate change, making them lose their once prosperous livelihood. In the North Bank region, women are predominantly rice cultivators, but changes to climate dynamics have significantly affected agriculture, with poor women farmers unable to afford funding to embrace mechanized farming. We mainly grow rice, but our main challenges are lack of farm implement and fertilizer. The price of fertilizer is expensive, which many cannot afford to buy. So we are appealing for help to boost our production and productivity. Since women still venture into rice cultivation, the lenses of empowerment being drawn by the Great Green Wall must focus on women. We've been discussing a lot, especially when it comes to women acquisition of land and ownership, and also how do we shift from subsistence agriculture to more commercialized agriculture, and also how do we empower women who are into food processing, and also how do we um, ensure that women are also engaged in agroforestry for them to at least uh, gain something meaningful from the agricultural sector, and also widen the food production sector for, uh, for Gambia to become full self-sufficient. Tamba Jame's best bet, as it now, is to add value to the little his garden can produce, as he already lost about 600 birds due to COVID. His bakery also collapsed during last year's windstorm, so the rice farmer is now focused on the production of aloe vera to develop soap products and moringa to make medicine. As a traditionalist, the organic farmer uses compost fertilizers in his garden. A mixture of sesame, granite, and moringa is also being used to make healthy edible oil as the farmer moves to uphold his grandfather's legacy in a more innovative and industrial approach by training the women to add value to their produce. 
teaching young people how, how to produce it because these are things that are found within our own environment. You know, we need to take care of them, add value to them and use them, you know, and then they are, they are, they are good. One, it will also help us to create job opportunities for young people and also it will also improve their economic uh, uh, status. So one, it will also help the country very well because the more we add value to our agricultural products, the things that are, that are grown, that, are, that we grow here, we add value to them and then we promote them, then the money will still be rotating among ourselves. But the more we depend on imported things, then <laughs> the money will come and go. A lot has changed over the years since the end of Chief Mama Tamba Jamme's regime. Climate change has become a more challenging threat to his great legacy, posing uncertainties and the million dollar question. If technocrats can't stop the effects of climate change in Ilyasa, what will Mama Tamba Jamme have done to ally existing challenges, depleting the quantity of his once famous rice paddy fields? Reporting for GRTS News in Badibu Ilyasa, I'm by Ibrahim Chan.